long journey on the way uh, back from Kudakoba going home to Sarah The people are big ready to do it. The thing locked them. It's the more, uh, they're trying to rock it to get all the gas in. Pretty funny. So, uh, it all looks tired. Had a long day. Day. Look at bed late. Had to get up super early to come back. Uh, the sunrise over there coming up. The sunrise is a little late here. Kind of interesting, but. Uh, well, so. Uh, the people. We all trying to. I get in the car, but we have to. Stop. And anyway, I'll put the thing here for you. Say hello to a macro driver. Say hello. You know I get no words from you, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the morning. I'm on my way back. Sorry, my man. <laughs> trying to get some money from me, so we just stop a little bit from man in the shop. Let's see what's going on. Kids are just off and doing their thing in the morning. Everybody's on their thing, on their mind, uh, mind their own business, doing their thing. Come back a little later. It's real. It's real. Like I said, it's pretty humbling, man. But so we let it go. So obviously, I don't do red meat, but they're preparing lamb. We've been doing eggs for breakfast. So this fresh bread they make is really good for you. So. What's going on here? I'm going to get this property tell him no. Uh, it's definitely not for the couple people. So we just stopped uh, on our way back from uh, Sudakoba back to Saracunda. And um, as I'm sitting here, I just came in the car, took a couple seconds. I'm reminded of the scripture that talks about the poor always being amongst us. And when I say that, I'm saying this as a black man in America who is not rich, who lives from check to check, obviously working on some things so that I can set myself up for the future. But I'm reminded of that scripture because I see the poor all around me. And it's so hard because you want to help every person that you see. Um, as you see, I'm video, but I'm looking around. You want to help every person out there that you see. Um, but you really can. And, um, you know, I have a lot of questions as to why, you know, the Africanas um, in this area are so poor. And um, oftentimes people ask me questions as a believer and, you know, why this and why does good things happen to, uh, bad things happen to good people. And, you know, so even as I'm seeing this, I, I'm, you know, I have a whole, a whole bunch of questions in my mind. And, I'm wondering, obviously, this will take more prayer and research and stuff like that. But for the most part, you know, you can see this every day. And, and it's just really intriguing that this is going on. It just saddens me, you know. And, you know, all I can do is just um, thank God for what I do have. Because most of the time, we're not grateful for the things that we do have. But anyway, I just thought I'd, I'd talk about that because it, it's just it's, it's heartbreaking to see this. And these are your people. And um, just the things that they're going through. But anyway, uh, yeah, it's one of those moments. So can't put it into words. But so anyway, until next time, Africa 2020, creating memories while leaving a legacy. Oh, some of the pictures of the people on here. If you see the women, I came bask baskets on their heads, and uh, they're actually selling, you know, different items and. Uh, yeah, it's pretty normal. I like to see. We're sitting here just waiting, but it's pretty normal to see. It's, it, every day is a hustle. Yeah, it's a straight hustle every day. Something to be said about, you know, 
pretty much survival of the fittest on a day to day basis. Let me move this bag. Uh, so I can get a better picture of what's going on outside. Um, yeah, people are on the, on the stroll and doing their thing. Motorcycles is definitely a, 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 a major mode of transportation. You got some people that can can afford them. You got some people that can, but we're doing our thing for sure. Well, let's see what's going on here. So the kids are like just knocking on the window right now, and so let's see what's going on. So now they're seeing that they think I got a phone, but they don't realize it's the iPad. So. All of them are like right on the side, and I don't want to turn around and, and point because it looks like they're trying to figure out what's going on. So, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn it off and I'm gonna show them themselves. <laughs> We're talking about America, how we hit a pothole in Michigan or California, tear up your car. We rolling through the. It's rough stuff right now. It ain't nothing being affected on this car. And it's rough. See that road ahead? It's rough. Sounds like the entire world. Yeah, I just thought I'd take this break and talk about it. It's so rough. It's rolling. Oh, I'll be back. We're going, going over the river now. And it's so funny, we were talking earlier about how the Chinese has come in and built this road. But like, we all know, they did that with the price and, and, and with the motive. So I think that it's come together as a people. Uh, 
the name of the river? Pelagi Riverside. Pelagi? Uh-huh. K-A-L-A-I-G. Kalagi. That's what we Kalagi. just Kalagi. passed over. Kalagi.
can't forget the hats. The hats has traveled and led us the way. <laughs> Well, greetings coming from Saracunda, where we returned from the festival. Um, as I mentioned in earlier videos, um, we traveled very, very far to small provinces and actually villages where um, the people I'm with, the family namesake was um, celebrated. It was completely amazing. To say the least, I'm actually wearing my ceremonial um, deeds. Um, that were given to me by um, what what would be considered my stepdaughter um, in a ceremonial fashion, and so um, now I'm Baba, and Baba uh, is a father, and so um, that's a traditional thing. But even that was an honor, and um, it was just really cool. And so I look at all of the different things that I have been able to experience, and words cannot express the appreciation that I have for this opportunity. I wish that many, many people, especially Africans in America, um, had the opportunity to literally come to Africa where our ancestors uh, were and experience and drink of all of them, the love that they have for their people. Um, they don't care where we are in this world. They just, they just know that we're all the same and we're part of them. And to see that exhibited in a festival fashion is truly um, I can't put it into words and so um, we have two days of just non-stop um, entertainment non-stop basically for lack of a better term pampering and they literally welcomed us and we were like honored guests I felt like a king um, in these very very small villages these people like I said live very primitive it's not like they have a whole lot but what they do have and that what we lack in America is happiness um, and it just exuded out of them like it was it was un unmatched and they loved us to death and i'm still absorbing this stuff i'm still processing it all but for the most part it was truly amazing to watch these people celebrate us and like i said before i i get the privilege of being a part of uh, um, as a, an extended family member of what um, baba Toure has been able to do for bar he's been able to do so much for his people and i mean the love was very very clearly seen just the way they they um opened up to him and just reached out to him and just loved on all of us just because we were with him and so if this is a taste of what it feels like to come home um this definitely will not be my last trip here because uh, i will come back and i've established so many relationships with so many people and um the love that they're giving is it's real um and unfortunately, this love that we see here, I don't see it in America in a lot of ways. Um, it's unadulterated. It's its real. It's authentic. And um, like I said, it does my heart well. And so the festival was amazing. Uh, I was in Sudakoba. And um, I will share much, much more about it. Sharing videos, footage. Um, it's just some amazing things that took place in the last couple of days. And uh, also in that process, um, Prophetically speaking, if any of you guys know me that way, um, there was a young man that I was um, literally sent to talk to and share some things that God showed me. And he's like, I'm my adopted uh, son now, and I'm going to look out for him. He's a runner. I'm going to make sure he has the things that he needs. And the cool part about meeting someone, um, instead of like using a company or some type of church or missions, to do this is that I literally know that whatever resources I send over here um, to Gambia they will go straight to Muhammad and he will be able to benefit from it and so um, even that was a cool experience it was just kind of like we saw God all over the place and and, and he made himself very known so um, with that being said um, it was amazing uh, words cannot express but I will be back with more. Um, this is the weekend, and there's so many more festivities that's planned for us, and uh, I'm going to enjoy and drink of all of this as much as I can and be able to communicate it to everybody back home in America. So, no righty, Africa 2020, creating memories while leaving a legacy. I'll talk to you later. So, I'm laying here preparing for bed, and 
obviously I am a person who processes things and I always want to make sure that I'm uh, communicating things well and so I just wanted to share a few things that I've been able to observe and I know that narratives have always been written for us even as black people and narratives have been written in America as it pertains to black people and somehow these narratives never have the true um, the truth behind them um, because obviously narratives are written in a way in a fashion where it's not necessarily uh, one wanting to pre present truth but one wanting to present their side of what they think the story is so the reason I bring that up is because here I am in West Africa in the Gambia and I have been awakened by uh, uh, Muslims call to prayer obviously they pray habitually and excuse me ritualistically five times a day where they pray to the east well that that first call starts pretty early in the morning it's about uh between three to four a.m and obviously they pray you know and then they you know pray again in, in a few hours and so on and so forth but there's a narrative that has been driven and of course i haven't bought into this narrative but for anyone who may be watching this i want to dispel just lies and and just stupidity to be honest and one of the narratives is that anybody who claims to be a Muslim all they want to do is come and blow up America or they're dangerous people or they're radical people and the number one thing I want to say is that there are stupid people in every religion possible there are radical Christians that you know will tell you you're going to hell every time you see them that will not represent you know Christ in, in the best fashion at all and so if there's a radical Christian you know of course there's going to be radical Muslims or radical you know uh, extremists of other religions and so it's so funny how Muslims get a bad name but what I can tell you that I've experienced here and this may blow some of your minds but I've faced some of the most rude um, they won't say it but they're prejudiced um, Christians in America but yet they're in church every Sunday uh, but here I've not I've not experienced that with with Muslims and I'm telling you I am surrounded um, by Muslims and all I get is kind-hearted peaceful people that have a love and a passion uh, to do right by, by Allah and you know I'm, I'm here to dispel any 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 uh, m uh, misled uh, information or narrative that has been written that you know all Muslims want to do is they're not peaceful people they're radicals because it's just, it just couldn't be further from the truth and and so um, this is one of the things that I was processing I was looking at this and I was processing this back and forth and I just felt it necessary to say something because um, there's these sad narratives that's being written and and it's really really given the Africana a bad name the Africana's a bad name and you know and so um, I wanted to be clear with that and I wanted to share that's one of the things that was on my mind um, also the other thing that was on my mind is just um, the true understanding of what it means um, to get knowledge for yourself and and to get understanding for yourself because one of the narrative uh, narrative excuse me that I've heard over the years is that uh, Africanos will not accept you know Africans from America because they're not pure we're not full you know full Africana and I'm telling you when I brought that to some of the major Mandingas people who are high-ranking Mandingas they were not happy at all and it's like who told you that then they were like that's a bunch of bullcrap that's not who we are we want our people to come back because we understand that we are one people and um, so they were like no that's not the truth and so here we are once again people writing narratives and speaking certain things that absolutely has no basis or truth from it but it's a narrative that's been driven to cause division you know because there's a dangerous situation when you get people that are one accord and they begin to operate in unity um, even in the scripture it, it says that nothing can stop them when they come together to be unified it was talking about the Tower of Babel of course and God was like listen these jokers you put them together you get them on one accord you, you, you know you can't explain how powerful you know they may be so with that being said I wanted to sorry it's late we've been up pretty much all day but I wanted to dispel you know those rumors that say that you know they're not kind people and they want to you know uh, take us out or um, that you know our people don't accept us because we're not pure and it's just it just couldn't be further from the truth and so this will help somebody someday to understand that everything that's being put out there is, is not 
correct. You know, people are afraid to come over to Africa because they think they're gonna die and this, that, and the other. It's just, and it's just stupid, stupid uh, situations and scenarios. Very crafted situations because at the end of the day, it's put out there so people can fear the black man or fear the Africanas. Um, and if you fear something that you and you, that, and you don't really get a true understanding, you know, then you you're operating under a false narrative. So anyway, it's a pretty long video, but like I said, I've been wanting to share this and process them and process it in my mind and I just wanted to share it tonight so we will continue on with the videos of course and you know I'm looking forward to this weekend it's going to be simply amazing um, more festivities and more um, sharing is in the very near future okay Africa 2020 creating memories while leaving a legacy till next time